We'll call the 21st regular meeting of the Common Council order. Sue, would you call the roll, please? Bauman. Here. Berg. Here. Serta. Here. Grav. Here. Kittleson. Here. Laux. Here. Manny. Excused. Montemayor. Here. Perez. Here. Rinfleisch. Excused. Sigali. Here. Stefan. Here. Van Akron. Here. Vanderweel. Here. And Warner. Here. 13 present. Quorum is present. Alderman Warner. I thank your honor. I move the minutes of the last common council meeting be approved and that the same stand is entered on the record. Second. It's been moved and seconded that minutes of the previous council meeting be approved under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Alderman Vanderweel, would you lead us in a pledge, please, this evening? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay. Confirmation of appointments. Hereby submit the following appointment for your consideration. William Longaman to be considered for appointment to the Historic Preservation Commission to fill the unexpired term of Richard Lundeen, whose term expires 4-30-06, signed by the mayor. That will lie over? No. Oh, that can be confirmed? Okay. Yep. All of them in order? I thank your honor that I move the mayor's appointments be confirmed. Second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Okay. Public forum. Um, first would be John Berner. Good John, evening. Would you like to give me your home address, please? 1919 Broadway. And you have five minutes, okay. sir. Okay. Uh, I wanted to talk the last time, and it was about the taser guns. <clears throat> and uh, I don't know if you were watching the news last week, but in Texas, they had a high school basketball game, got out of hand where they were really fighting in there. Uh, they subdued the people with taser guns, with no incidents. And uh, kind of showing people that are against this that uh, they do work. Not everything is 100% perfect. Uh, and for the police department, I know you were talking about the police department getting them for everybody, uh, but to have two, that'd be like giving the library uh, two computers, leave one in the box, when the other one's broke, take it out. Uh, it, it's something that's needed. It's something that's needed uh, to help in the prevention without other injury due to the spray or the clubs or taking out a pistol. So it does work. There are going to be incident, incidents, you know what I'm saying, where uh, people are going to get injured in a fall or something. And um, one of the older persons said something about a class action suit. Do you know how many class action suits are in the United States today? I bet if you go on the internet, you probably sit there all day finding it. It's the welding industry. They have a class action suit. I used to be a welder. Uh, it's just people in the medical field, class action suits. So everybody's being sued just to say that there is a class action suit doesn't uh, mean that it's, you know, bad. I think it's until something better comes along, I think that is the best piece the police could have. I mean, you've got, they have a canine unit. Uh, what if a dog gets out of control and he, I mean, a dog can tear somebody apart just as fast as a bullet. So uh, that's what I want to say the last time. So I hope the city does get some money and give the police so they each have one. Not that somebody has to borrow one every day. I thank you. Thank, thank you, Chad. Short one. 
<laughs> How do you like the suit? Huh? That was good. <laughs> Masquerading as a highly educated businessman. <laughs> uh, next, we have Jason Shane. <clears throat> Jason, can I have your home address, please? 1418 Bluff Avenue, apartment A. Bluff Avenue? Yeah. And you will have five minutes. Okay, I just wanted to talk about the incinerator site that they're going to tear down. I wanted to talk about the wild animals in there. There's quite a few in there, and I wanted to know if they had any plans on taking it down and doing anything with the animals that are in there. And if they do, I would like to be notified to see if I could help on anything like that. And that's really all I have. Just wanted to advise my opinion on it and see what we could do with that. Okay. Thank, Thank you, Jason. you, Jason. That's it. That's it. Okay. Before we get into the consent agenda, I think everyone has a slip on their desk about the American Association of University Women and their present an educational forum on a topic of CABER. That will be Wednesday, February 9th, 2005, 6.30 to 8 o'clock at Sheboygan Falls High School Auditorium. <coughs> so if anyone's interested in going, please let them know. Alderman Warner. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I guess that uh, issue about CABER is something we should all consider trying to attend on Wednesday. Pretty, pretty interesting. There's a couple of things I just wanted to share with the public and with the council at this time. Uh, there's been a lot of discussions over the past few months uh, and some unfounded speculation regarding the soil conditions at the location of the city's new police station. And as we all know, Donahue and Associ Associates was hired to do preliminary, pr preliminary soil, soil borings on the site. They did 10 geoprobe soil borings were done and the results are now complete. I'd like to read the conclusion page included with their scientific findings. <clears throat> it says, a review of historical maps indicates that the site was reserved for use as a public square and parking dating back at least to 1875, and park dating back to at least 1875. Mature trees were present in the park on a postcard dated 1909, indicating that the topography had not been altered in the recent pre-1909 past. If the existing topography is different than the pre-settlement topography, the changes were likely made during construction of the adjacent streets prior to 1875. Soil borings revealed a four to six foot thick layer of light brown sand underlain by native silty clay to depths ranging from eight to 16 feet. No indication of dumping, rubbish, rubble, or foundry sand was found in the soil samples. Donahue and Association Incorporated has appreciated the opportunity to assist the city of Sheboygan with this project. And if you have any questions there, ask that we contact them. So the report on that is back, and I believe it was sent to Tom. And along with that, I received a letter from Mr. John C. Sabinosh, which is being referred to the council. And John Sabinosh is the vice, vice president and principal of the Zimmerman Design Group. And this letter is in regard to the findings of Donahue Associates, also addressing some other issues raised regarding the site where we will build our new police station. For the public's knowledge, I would like to share this, what he had to say. He addressed it to myself and said, it was so good to speak with you regarding the project. We anticipate starting in earnest after our kickoff meeting on February 15th and are anxious, anxious to begin to design this exciting project. We are pleased to carry this mantle for the city and understand the responsibilities incumbent upon our team. We understand the results of the preliminary soil investigation championed by Donahue and Associates have been favorable to date, <coughs> resulting in no fiscal impact due to organic or other del deleterious fill materials. There is now a higher likelihood that the foundation can be designed in a conventional fashion. This outcome is important since cost related to unfavorable foundation design is rarely returned in an economical fashion. 
Rather, disproportionate foundation costs would have been a premium cost that we do not apparently need to bear. We advise continued caution as the design progresses and more information becomes available, but we are now even more optimistic and we acknowledge the diligence of the city engineering staff in previous work as well as this process to date. Although ZDG was not party to the site selection effort, we see no protocols that would lead us to believe this site is anything but viable for police operations or shared functions both in the long and short term. There will be challenges to address related to scale and position of the facility, but we believe the site holds opportunities for us to mesh a new civic function into the existing park. ZDG is prepared to address those issues and fulfill a vision for a beautiful park building that houses police department functions sensibly and appropriately. Lastly, ZDG is aware that a number of citizens and their representatives are concerned with the nature of shared services in this facility. ZDG will address those concerns in the planning process to leave the door open for those functions within the design both now and in the future. Clearly, those opportunities have not been fully identified, but ZDG will work with staff to define those locations where combined services make sense and where prudent planning allows the opportunity to pre-invest or plan for their inclusion in the future. I guess I just hope that this helps those with concerns understand that the decisions we have made are sound. The Zimmerman Design Group is an outstanding leader in its field. Their experience and professional standing in their peer group is second to none. And they are the best of the best and will design a functional police station that will meet Sheboygan's needs far into the future. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Munn here. Oh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Alderman Werner, I, it's wonderful that, um, that this um, letter from Zimmerman was included in our packet. I appreciate that very much. Could we also, as council members, get a copy of that Donahue and Associates soil information? To Tom Holton. I was allowing him to bring that into the council rather than a copy was sent to the mayor, myself, and the police chief, but it was directed at Tom. So that would come in through them. Okay, but we can have a copy? Sure. We talked to you about getting a copy, but that would be the only way. You're not gonna give a copy to all of us? If you would like it, we'll get you one. Oh, it is a lot of pages. It's about, this is a... That thick. Okay, I'll come in and pay for my own copy. Thank you. Okay, hold on. If there's nothing else, consent agenda. Alderman Warner. On that, Your Honor, I move that all ROs be accepted and placed on file. All RCs be accepted and adopted. All resolutions, mm -hmm. substitute resolutions, and ordinances be passed. Second. We have a motion and a second before us that all ROs be accepted and filed. All RCs be accepted and adopted. Resolutions and ordinances be put upon your oh. passage. And that's 21 1 through 21 22. You'll notice on 23, 21, 23, that we will hold. That'll be held over. Okay, is there any discussion on 21, 1 through 21, 22? If not, would you call the roll? <clears throat> Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Graf? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Laux? Aye. Montemayor? Perez, Sigali, Stefan, Van Akron, Vanderweel, Aye. and Warner. Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carried. 2124 through 2139 to be referred. Alderman Perez. Thank you, Mayor. Just wanted to ask about 2131. Uh, there seems to be a lot of talk about the ethanol plant, and I haven't, as an alderman, haven't seen anything. Is there anything out there that alderman could be looking at now? You will get a presentation, a short presentation tonight. Some of our staff went and over to Oshkosh today and okay. spoke with Utica. Okay. And one of the aldermen, Alderman Kettleson, went along. Okay. And they're going to let us know what they found out. Wonderful. Thank you. And then we are trying to schedule some public meetings up here on that once we can get them to come over here. Okay. Thank you. Okay. 2140. 
by Alderman Groff, authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2005 budget. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that that resolution be put up on its passage. We have a motion and a second before us that the resolution be put upon its passage. Any discussion? Hearing none, will you call the roll? Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Graf? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Laux? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Perez? No. Sigali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Ann Warner? Aye. Ann Bauman? Aye. <laughs> Uh, 12 eyes, 1 no. 2141 will lie over. 2142 through 45 to be referred. 2146 can be accepted and adopted. Special Marina Committee. Dennis? Jim? Your Honor, I would move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Moved and seconded that RC be accepted and adopted. Under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. 2147, also accept and adopt, and that's by law and licensing recommending the I and Beverage Operators License 6662 based on the applicant's failure to cooperate with the committee and her failure to reveal all violations. Alderman Manny is not Alderman Vanderwell. Vanderwell. I'll move to accept and adopt the report of committee. We have a motion and a second before us under discussion. Okay. I'll, Steve? Excuse me, city attorney. Ask if the uh, person is present. Under discussion, I'd ask if the. Uh, it would be Christine Tron. If Christine is here. She's not. Okay. Okay. Do you have another discussion? Would you call the roll, please? Serta. Aye. Graf. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Laux. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Perez. Aye. Sigali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. Vander Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Warner. Aye. Bauman. Aye. And Berg. Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carried. 2148 will be referred to Building Use Committee. 2149, by law and licensing, recommending accepting the withdrawal of beverage operator's license application 1553 at the applicant's request. Alderman Vanderwell. I'll move to accept and adopt the report of committee. We have a motion and a second before us. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, would you call the roll? Graf. Aye. Kittleson. Laux, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Perez, Aye. Sigali, Aye. Stefan, Aye. Van Akron, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Warner, Aye. Bauman, Aye. Berg, Aye. Serta. Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carried. 2150 by Public Works recommending proceeding with the demolition orders for the Sheboygan incinerator. Alderman Bauman, Public Works. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd move to accept and adopt the report of committee. Second. We have a motion and a second before us under discussion. Alderman Perez. Thank you, Mayor. Just wanted to explain why I'm going to vote against this uh, particular report of committee. I had the privilege of visiting the uh, incinerator myself, and while I concluded from my visit that perhaps the incinerator does need to be dealt with, I felt that it was not high on the priority list for us to spend $300,000 or around that amount uh, at this time where, when we were so tight for, for funds. Uh, that to me translates to several jobs in the Public Works Department or other uh, capital improvement projects that we need most, in my mind anyway, uh, for example, streets and so forth. That is why I also voted against the, uh, the appropri uh, appropriation uh, of funds uh, from the uh, general fund and fund transfer to the capital project for the incinerator. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Scott. Thank you, Your Honor. Could we please hear from Tom Holton concerning the reasons why it should be dis uh, destroyed at this time? Thank you. Sure. Thank you. The incinerator has been in the capital improvements list has submitted probably five or six years to tear down. It's a liability. 
Uh, some people went through there. Uh, there's holes in the floor. Uh, it's, it's absolutely filthy in there from animals. Uh, it's a matter of time before someone gets in there and gets hurt. And uh, it'll never be any cheaper to take it down. Uh, the price has been going up from demolition. Right now, steel, scrap steel is up. That's going to help reduce the cost because there's a lot of steel in that building. And uh, we need the space. We need room to store salt. We're ruining the service building where salt's being stored right now. We cannot store our full allotment, so we end up paying rent on the docks in Milwaukee. But I believe it's 20 cents a ton a month we pay for rent uh, if we don't use up our full salt allotment for the year. Uh, we, the department strongly feels it needs to come down and put to productive use. Tom, is there any chance of sharing any uh, storage with the county on this? Sure, we, do, we, do, we, we'll, we exchange salt back and forth. Uh, when, we, when we're low, we get salt from them. Uh, when they're low, they'll borrow salt from us, and sure there is. So good shared service? Yes. Something we do, okay. Alderman Vanderwill, do you have a question? Thank you, Your Honor. I just wanted to say, uh, when I was approached by a business owner in my district, who wanted to buy the old incinerator, I wanted to investigate that possibility and be positive we were doing that, what was best for the city. Tom, you can sit down if you want. <laughs> <laughs> I thank the council for giving me that time because I was sick at that time when we voted on it. But uh, Alderman Warner and I toured the incinerator and looked over the property that was connected to it. If we would sell Mr. Weston that property that he wants, it would cost the city more to relocate buildings than he is willing to pay. With re relocating the storage buildings, we would most likely have to purchase property to put them on. And the city would still need to purchase a much needed salt shed. Businessmen are always coming forward that want to buy the incinerator. If it was worth buying, someone would have done it years ago. From what I have seen, it is obvious that the incinerator needs to come down. If we leave it as it is, the, the building has the potential of housing a local catastrophe. We just can't let that happen. It reminds me of somewhere that a serial killer would hang out. Thank you. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Thank you. Alderman Serta. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, the main true motivation behind this demolition is, again, the, Tom, had, you had bring up the liability issue. I'm just surprised that that's not really being enforced. I think we're fortunate as the city taxpayers because it's like putting money into old wineskins. If it's a liability issue, the insurance could mandate us to get that building up to code, which why would we want to put money into, again, old wineskins? I think it's important that in the time is right, and it will only, the cost in tearing it down would only increase if we put it off any longer. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Warner. I think uh, I do have one question for Tom, uh, and then just a couple of comments. Tom, you mentioned something that if uh, the company that takes it down, if they get any proceeds from steel and things in it, will that lower our costs? Sure. It, it's, it, goes in the, it goes out for bid, and they'll, they'll go through and they'll t calculate how much steel is in that building, and they'll reduce that off their demo price of whatever that scrap value it has. So we do realize a benefit from it. So we could save, I don't know, twenty-five, fifty thousand, 50000 maybe? You think that much? Well, I couldn't tell you. Uh, it's hard to tell until someone gets in. You don't know how much, I don't know how much steel's in that concrete. Uh, so if the bids are too high, we could say, well, we're not interested anyway. Sure, we can. Yeah, we don't have to go for the bid. We don't have to accept the bid mm -hmm. if we feel it's unreasonable. Okay. It is, as Alderman Vander really uh, stated, uh, him and I did get through that building, and uh, we had Tom along and, and the deputy, uh, David, and I was just amazed. The vandalism that's been in, all the windows are broke. Not only is the ceiling falling down and concrete dropping on things, but there have been kids, young people in there playing. There's, there's graffiti on the walls. There's uh, somebody was using the toilets for Lord knows what. There's uh, animal tracks all over. There's pigeon droppings that you could scrape up with one of these coal shovels. I mean, it's talking, you're talking an inch deep in some areas, and it's spread out over 20, 30 uh, foot diameter circles. Uh, we're lucky at this point that no one has been injured in there or that somebody didn't go in there just to look at the place and find a body. Because even walking on the floor, when I got home, I had to take off my boots and dig out the little pieces of glass that were in there. I, I shouldn't have probably worn rubber sole boots. I should have had steel sole boots or something to walk through there. But the place really needs to be taken care of. You always want to look at the possibility of selling something and getting it back on a tax rolls. But you have to realize that if you put a factory in there, now you're putting a factory right next to a residential area that used to be an incinerator. And I don't think the impact from public works functioning there, which the residents are used to, is going to be anything close to what a factory would be if you put it in there. And uh, uh, salt shed, I've learned through my experience, is probably going to cost us $300,000 to 
to build if we had to build one uh, that would take all of our salt. So I think it's probably a wise thing. Nobody likes spending money like this at this time, but I think if we had an accident in there, if, if you don't believe it, go in there and look. Someone could be injured very easily. There's even one place up there where you could actually be walking along, and if you weren't paying attention and it was dark, you could slide down the chute about 30 feet and land on concrete down below, and you would never even know it. It's right by a, like a concrete railing. Uh, if Tom weren't have warned us about it and we'd have turned around, we'd have probably slid down the chute. I actually did slip on the stairs going up. I mean, there's, there's animals, there's birds, there's everything, and it's probably in the city's best interest to take it down. Thank you. Alderman Serta. Thank you, Your Honor. Last question. Is there any, do we pay for any um, types of services to maintain that building at status quo? And if we do, again, this would be cost savings just to eliminate some needless costs in the, the future. The only thing we have electric service in there is to keep a couple of lights on on a lower level. But I, I don't think the budget's more than two or $300 on it right now. Okay. Thank you, Tom. No other discussion? No, we don't need a roll on this. Probably should. Let's do a roll. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, Kittleson? Aye. Laux? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Perez? No. Sigali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Warner? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta? And Graf. 12 ayes, 1 no. Motion carries. 1251 by finance recommending entering into a contract with Paragon Software International Inc. for the development of the municipal court model module for the city's current crime system software. Alderman Warner? No, excuse me, Alderman Graf. Thank you, Your Honor. 2151. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, uh, I would move that the RC be accepted and adopted and the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second before us, under discussion. Your Honor, under discussion, uh, um, Alderman uh, Warner was at our, our meeting and um, I believe he said something about the, the finalized um, contract would be completed by this time or is there a, a finalized contract? Um, Okay, and um, was there any other discussion regarding the um, the other county or the other entities that are going to be in this with us? Okay. The other entities that are going to be contributing to this, the city budgeted. Uh, $20,000 for this. The contract is for $17,000. And that's, uh, I didn't bring that with me, but it is, it's, it's a contract for $17,000 to do the work. And I think Steve can attest to that. And that was what he sent us and what we accepted. <clears throat> but the other communities that are going to be involved in this, they will pay a share and a percentage based on what their use is expected to be. Uh, the one that's going to join probably immediately, and what I'm saying is because until they actually do, we don't have nothing. The city would have to bear the cost itself at $17,000, but until they come forward and we get the software running is when they would join and they'd pay a set fee. And I'm not sure, Bob, if you know what those numbers are offhand on this, or Rich? It was almost half of the cost My of the software. My information was that the uh, contract would be about $17,000 and then half the money would be paid for by the other entities. So half of 17. The city's fronting the cost through its budget, and when these people join into this crime software system, that's when they would pay. And the interest is there. Are they gonna sign it before the software's there? No. But the city would bear the cost anyway because it's saving us an entire person, uh, basically a whole position, so. One more time, how many other uh, the wise. city of Plymouth is very interested. In fact, uh, uh, the police chief in the city of Plymouth said it's not a problem for them. They'll gladly pay their share. Okay. So, other than that, 
you've taken him at his word like that, but it doesn't matter because we would bear the entire cost of this software otherwise. So once the software is up and running, they, they, they're paying somebody right now to re-enter all this information. And when this crime software is up and running, those, both, that person's workload is probably going to be cut in half. So it's pretty important. Um, it allows, this is the first building block in the creation of the municipal court, and it's very important in getting the court in place. Um, the software is a module of the, the now shared city county crime software system that we have. This is a module of that system that is a shared service across the county, and every part of the, uh, of the county uses it. Um, this is going to use data from that shared service, which is our crime reporting software, and import it into the module that's for the court software. So that clerk typist that's going to be entering this in a court won't have to enter that much information, which is the, the bulk of the information. Uh, the City of Plymouth will share in the costs, as will the Village of Kohler, the City of Sheboygan Falls, when their municipal courts go live. The City of Plymouth's court is, is live at this time and, uh, and functioning. They're using a different software that isn't tied into what's in our existing database. The AS300, as the city has, runs the county and the city's crime software for the police department and the, and the sheriff's department. And this is an extension of that shared service that the other communities will, will be able to share with us. So our pro forma budget did budget this as part of the cost. That's already been approved. And uh, this is something that, when it moves forward, will be a great help to the city. Thank you. Marge? Follow me. Thank, thank you, Your Honor. Um, Deputy Chief, if you could just explain to the people one more time, since we're putting in, in this into passage, just exactly what the software is going to do for you. Well. My understanding of the software, I think somebody really from IS department should address this. I'm not really an authority on it, but my understanding is this is a, uh, a software package uh, to, uh, to work with our municipal court process. Uh, it was budgeted uh, prior to this date uh, to, uh, to pay for it, and uh, we've, uh, speaking with the other entities, and more or less agreed that they would pick up half the costs when and if they come on board, like Alderman Warner stated. So it's a, uh, it's a necessary part of this function to, to make it work properly. Steve, excuse me. Go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, just a couple of comments. Uh, it's been very helpful. We've had uh, Kohler and uh, representatives from Sheboygan Falls, and especially representatives from the city of Plymouth in meeting with the Paragon software as far as, uh, uh, you know, the, the module as to what to put into it. Uh, Plymouth has been operating a municipal court for a year. They've got a current software package that they, they don't like, and they've been real helpful in that they're up and running and they know basically the forms that are necessary, there are state forms that are required, and uh, it's been real helpful to have them to, uh, as a resource and, uh, and aid in meeting with Paragon to give some guidance to uh, Mr. Pote as to what needs to go into the module. Uh, one thing council should be aware of uh, that's different than uh, what came out of the uh, study committee was uh, Originally, the IS department had been told by uh, Paragon that it, once uh, they got the go-ahead, they estimated three months to do the, uh, to do the software. Uh, and the committee, the study committee felt, and it's in the report, that it's important to have the software available before you start the municipal court uh, so that you're not starting on, with you know, uh, uh, one software program and then converting to another. Uh, unfortunately, in the, uh, we haven't finalized the contract yet, but it, at least in the, uh, uh, the written proposal that Paragon's put forth, they're estimating to take four to six months to uh, complete the software package. Uh, so I still think it's important that that software package be in place before operating the court. Uh, so you're, you're likely to, if it does take four to six months, you may not be up and running by, uh, by June or July as originally anticipated. Uh, 
I personally don't think that that's a particular problem. It's not like we don't have a court system in place currently. You know, we, we've got circuit court, it's working fine. Uh, the whole issue has been, um, you know, there's been a couple strong issues as to why to convert to a municipal court, but there's nothing pressing that it has to be done at X, X date or X time. So uh, I think it should be done when it's ready to go at the right time and not before then. But that's, the council needs to be aware of that because that was not what was in the report of the committee. Okay. Alderman Warner. I think, in fairness to Deputy Chief Weiss, he really wasn't part of the Municipal Court Committee, so I mean, he knew just the basics, so he doesn't have all the answers in there. And I sit here and think about what Steve's talking about to refresh my memory also. And we did talk about that. I mean, we had a goal at first of June 1st, and we moved that back to July 1st, thinking that might be it. But to get the software in line, when we put that pro forma budget together, that was based on 12 months starting from anywhere. February 1st to February 1st, March 1st to March 1st, July to July. We put it together based on what the cost would be, and Rich can attest to that. It was one of those budgets. We didn't say it had to be January 1st of, of 2003 to January 1st of 2004. It was put together so that it would, it would function as a month-to-month -month budget, any 12-month period. So that's still going to still gonna happen, but the software may take a couple months longer, and I think it's important that we get it started. It's already been, you know, we wanted to have this approved before the end of the year so they could get started February 1, and uh, it's already taking longer now. And it could actually be done in the three to four months originally planned for it. Uh, any way you look at it, it's, uh, it's important to the function of that court and to the pro forma budget that we put together that the software get done first and we get the clerk on so the clerk can learn it. So. Thank you. Alderman Draw. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, in finance, this was not a unanimous decision as far as setting this forward, and I will not support it tonight basically because of what um, Attorney McLean had said where um, this is the first step that we have uh, um, as far as establishing this municipal court. And we, we already do have the circuit court that seems to be working fine, and um, this is basically what I think uh, is creating a new department, and we have documents later that, that actually do that and, and set up a budget and so forth for that. And then this also, I don't think at this particular time, is fiscally responsible for us to do. So. Okay. Just no other discussion. Would you call the roll, please? Logs. Aye. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. Logs. Aye. Sorry, Gary. Montemayor. No. Perez. No. Sigali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Warner. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Graf? No. Kittleson? Aye. Uh, ten ayes and three noes. Motion carries. 2152 through 2154 will lie over. 2155 through 57 to be referred. 2040, by Alderman Warner, Vanderweel, Sigali, Reinflesch, and Serter, relating to no parking period so as to include the east side of South 18th Street from a point 150 feet north of the north curb line of Mead Avenue to a point of 40 feet north thereof. Alderman Warner. I thank Your Honor. Move the general ordinance to be put upon its passage. We have a motion and a second before us under discussion. Under discussion, Your Honor, this is at the South 18th Street Fire Station area from Mead Avenue. Uh, that is to the north of Mead Avenue on 18th Street. This adds a small 40-foot section of the east side of South 18th Street to the no parking regulations. The fire department needs this to open up the vision and maneuvering, er maneuvering area at South 18th Street. Um, and I think this will make it safer for them to operate there. A lot of cars have been parking up there and it just makes it more difficult. That first 150 feet will still be open for parking, so this is taking a small section out of there. Thank you. Alderman Serta. Thank you, Your Honor. I just want to mention, too, that this is my district, District 6, and that we did ask in the committee that there would be a letter sent out to the apartment complex, which the individuals who would be affected by this. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have another discussion? Would you call the roll, please? Montemayor. Aye. Perez. Aye. 
Sagali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Warner. Aye. Bauman. Aye. Berg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Graf. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. And Lauks. 13 ayes. Motion carried. 2159 goes to finance. 2160 will go to City Plan Commission. There is no 2161. <laughs> 2162, a resolution by Alderman Van Akron and Perez directing a public hearing to be held in connection with the change of zoning for property located at 802 Blue Harbor Drive. Alderman Van Akron. Your Honor, I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. We have a motion and a second before us under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. 2163 will go to Plan Commission. Steve, other matters? 2164 is a communication from the Zimmerman Design Group regarding the Sheboygan Police Department building design. Building use? 2165 is a communication from Salvation Army requesting permission from the city to test the paint on the exterior of the building located at 1116 Huron Avenue, currently known as Sheboygan Child Care Center for lead. Public Works. 2166 is a communication from attorney Anthony Racemius of Rody Dales requesting the withdrawal of the application for rezoning for 1331 Alabama Avenue as the property was sold on February 1, 2005. City plan. 2167 is a communication from Hans Groff, chairman of the 2005 Bratz Leukemia Cup Regatta requesting permission to close down Pennsylvania Avenue from Broughton Drive East during their event on July 29th through the 31st. Public protection and safety. 2168 is a resolution authorizing the appointment of a commission to examine and promote the expansion of intergovernmental cooperation for the purpose of stabilizing local tax rates while promoting a higher standard of living and economic development. That will lie over. Now before we adjourn, Paulette or Tom, uh, would you give us a little information on how it went at Utica today? Sure. Good evening. Um, City staff, along with Alderperson Kittleson, and I think the newspaper was present as, long, as well as the radio station. And what we did was we spent about two and a half hours with company officials, both Utica and Cargill. We toured their existing Ashcash facility, and then we met together, um, said city staff, along with company officials, and talked about what they are proposing in Sheboygan. And they stress that they're in the conceptual stages and they really don't have anything to present to the city yet. They, um, they're estimating about a $30 million investment in Sheboygan. They would employ approximately 30 to 35 people. And they are willing to answer any type of questions that any, anyone would have. And I do have the contact, um, the names for both companies. So if, you, you know, if anyone would like that, please feel free to give me a call and I'll give those to you. And we did ask a couple questions, why Sheboygan, and why not just um, add on to their existing facility um, in the Ashkash area. What, what they mentioned was that the existing infrastructure exists, they do not want to abandon this facility in Sheboygan, and they have, uh, and rail access <coughs> is present. So not only will that help them, it'll also help other businesses in Sheboygan to keep rail access in that area. If approved, they expect it to be up and running, I think it was September of 2006. And their next steps would be they would move on from the conceptual stage and then submit plans to the city so that we could determine whether or not the zoning is appropriate. And if not, they'd have to go through some type of a, you know, a rezoning process with the city. Paulette, were they agreeable to come to Sheboygan to have a meeting here and uh talk to the citizens and also to all the persons? Well, my understanding was that, the, I mean, they did stress it's in the conceptual stages, right. but that they were willing to um, answer any kind of questions and they want to be good neighbors. Good, because there are a lot of questions out there that need to be addressed. And we did mention that. Okay. And they, they tried to answer as many as what they could based on the fact that it's a conceptual plan. Alderman Kittleson, you went along. Is there anything you want to add? Mm -hmm. 
as Paulette said, um, it was very interesting. We learned a lot today. Um, the the facility is out in the, um, it's in a rural area. And of course, we would be putting it in our residential area. So that, that is a concern. And there are, I think, I think there are a lot of questions yet to, yet to be answered. I think they were very willing to, to come to us. Um, I think they are people of integrity. Um, they, they do want the best for us also. But we do, there are a lot of questions yet, I think. I think we have to put the pluses in one column and the minuses in the other, and I, I, a lot to be weighed out yet um, before we would come to any agreement as to what would, what would be the best, work, most workable situation for us. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone have any questions? Yeah, I'll just mention one more thing that we did. You know, we brought up some of the issues about, um, you know, is it, is there some type of a risk for explosion or flame? You know, is it flammable? Is it's, you know, they have to realize that they're in an urban setting versus a rural setting. Um, smell, noise, and all of, you know, I think a lot of the issues that have been brought up by the public and by the, you know, the council and by some of the city employees. And they tried to answer some of those questions as best as they could, but it was, said somewhat difficult without really knowing what the plan is yet. The other thing also, Mayor, is that it's hard for them to make any judgment based on, uh, on uh, even another facility because there isn't another facility um, that will be put into a residential area. So we had, there was not a good comparison, as, as I felt, because they are out in the rural setting. We don't know what will what will occur once it comes in, in, into a residential area, and they don't have anything to compare that to. So that was uh, compared a question. to in our state. Are you speaking or across the United States? I mean, there are some in rural areas. I'm understanding in older cities. But those are older facilities. What they're right. saying this is state of the art, and okay. the state of their facilities right now are in rural settings and okay. not in urban settings. But we did mention that all of these questions are going to come up and they need to be prepared to answer them. Okay, very good. Thank you. Um, Alderman Berg. Thank you, Your Honor. I have right here a lot of information on uh, ethanol uh, plants releasing toxins, the e EPA reports here. And if you, anybody wants to see the web, you can uh, get it from me. I'll give, I'll give it to you, or I can give it to the clerk. And uh, anybody wants to get that address, you go on the internet and get all the information you want. It shows the different settings, the rural settings, and what happens inside the city, especially St. Paul, Minnesota, where they had a lot of problems. Thank you. We have a motion and a second before us. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? And they, and they have to wait months and months for, for visits.